Hi ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Dr. Donna, and yes, it is time for week number three in 52 for you and you and me and me. You and you and me and me. What's interesting about this book is that I grew up during Reaganomics and I come from a long line of Democrats. Our dining room chats when we had them or if something occurred in the economy, it was terrible. Oh my goodness. I didn't know what Reaganomics was, but I knew it had to be a bad thing. After reading this book, what I found out was that Ronald Reagan, can you believe it or not? <laughs> he was a human being. He was actually a human being. I thought it was some big giant somewhere off in Washington, D.C., and I had no idea that he was actually a human being. And one of the things that made him resonate the most with the Republican Party, in fact, he had a 68% approval rate when he left office, was that his human connection. He wanted to connect with people. And he learned how to do that because he was an actor and he was on radio. And he understood command presence. And when you looked someone in their eye, he understood that it was just between you and them. And that's what made him a good human being. Oh, my God. The assassination attempt. Can I tell you, I actually remember it. And I remember my mother worked second shift. So I had to watch it on the news in my godmother's bedroom on her television. And all I could remember was him putting his hand up in the air, and that was it. And then it went to black. I actually even looked it up on YouTube after I read the book again, because I just couldn't believe that in my lifetime, the president got shot. This was terrible. What I found out in the book was after he got shot, they rushed him off to the hospital. But what actually transpired was the person that assassinated him, Hinckley, was actually shooting with a 22 handgun. And what happened was he was so close shooting around President Reagan, that one of the bullets actually hit the president's vehicle and because it's bulletproof, the flechette round or part of the fragment actually pierced his lung. And that's what actually shot him and penetrated to him. It's an awful, horrible situation to be in. Oh my goodness. I just can't even imagine something like that. Hopefully we never, ever have to experience that again. People were, some people were happy. Some people were sad. And I just think at this point in my life, if someone gets shot at and someone gets assassinated unbeknownst to anyone else, it's not war and they don't know what's going on. I think that that's a terrible, horrible thing. So even if you didn't like Reagan and you didn't like his Reaganomics, you had to cut him some slack because he did get shot. I actually have something in common with Ronald Reagan. I know that's how can I have something in common with Ronald Reagan, but he came from a family of alcoholics. His father was a raging alcoholic and it had an adverse effect on Ronald Reagan. Most people don't know this, but he was actually shy. And I used to be shy too until about the age of 11. It's just something about having that parent in the house around them that just makes you just want to go and hide somewhere. Fortunately for him, his mother Nellie told him, son, you'll never be alone as long as you have books, which is interesting because I'm reading the book about him. So I would put, I like that advice because you are, it's correct. You'll never be alone as long as you have the opportunity to read books, engage and interact and find out more. There's so many books in the world. If I lived to be 150, I could never read them all. I would have to agree with his mom, Nellie. Yes. Books allow you to go places and see things that you would never have access to. It also allows you to find a way to cope with this thing and this disease called alcoholism. And of course, go to al meetings today. Definitely do that. But it's amazing how an alcoholic parent can cause you to be very shy and then turn into this amazing personality with the right support system. The main concept that was resonant throughout the book was that he was always looking for the competitive advantage, whether it was in acting, when he was a governor, as a president, even with the library, everything was about the competitive advantage. People argue today, oh my goodness, don't be competitive, don't be competitive. But healthy competition is good. It gets the adrenaline flowing and it, I won't say forces you, it empowers you to become your best. 
A lot of people are just lazy nowadays, and they just, oh, it's hard. Oh, I sweat. I, I don't know what they're doing because I sweat it. Oh, no, you mean I have to think? Oh, I don't know. I just, just make it easy for me. Oh, I'm just all this whining. But a competitive advantage allows you, if you need to get mentally strong, spiritually strong, or physically strong, you want to maintain a competitive advantage, if nothing else, for yourself. I am my best competition, and I'm always competing against Dr. Donna last month, last year five years ago. What can I do to become better? And that's what he did. It showed throughout the book. In 2004, when Mr. Reagan made his transition, two very life-changing events occurred for me. Number one, I went through a divorce. It was very nasty and ugly and hideous. And because I wanted to do something positive to end the year on a high note, I actually started working on my doctorate, which I thought was very amazing. So it was a loss and a gain all within the same year. Yes, I say read the book. Take the information for what it's worth at face value. Use what applies to you and let the rest go. That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. It has been my pleasure and privilege to present this week's book to you. Before I get out of here, just remember, if it's possible for me, then it's possible for you. Watch what we can do in 52. I'll see you guys next week. Adios.